Hey everybody, welcome to another Integrative Life Center webinar. Uh, we've got me McCormick um, on the webinar today to talk about healing foods and eating uh, for your microbiome. Yes, so she just came out, what, two days ago, me? Two days ago, it's my new baby, homies. That's gotta be pretty. So she's, uh, she's got a uh, new book out, My Pinewood Kitchen, A Southern Culinary Cure, 133, 130, excuse me, crazy, delicious, gluten-free recipes to reduce inflammation and make your gut happy. And we're going to be talking about all kinds of things to, um, in quarantine to kind of help um, eat better. And so, me, thanks so much. Um, would you tell us a little bit, okay, your story real quick. You did not intend to be here. Um, we are, we are kind of not scrambling, but we've got a kind of temporary setup because you're not home right now. I've actually been gone for six weeks. Um, I've been, I came on spring break and I am someone who is super high risk. So I have five autoimmune diseases and um, I'm immune compromised. So we went away, to, we came to the beach thinking we were just gonna have our regular spring break and we got caught in the middle of the whole pandemic. And honestly, I got really, really scared. And I went into that shutdown mode of fear, which I think all of us have been there and hopefully coming out of and adjusting. And so what happened is we, my partner, um, who you all know, Ryan Chapman, happens to have a little bungalow on Anna Maria Island that um, they rent out. And he said, me, come stay and hide and rest. Because that's the best thing you can do for this virus. So I've actually been working a lot running Pinewood from here on my phone. And I'll be going home this weekend and um, finding my way gently back onto the farm and uh, managing Pinewood Kitchen from the farm. So that's Excellent. what's happening. Well, good. So I've been glad, very blessed. Glad you're hunkered down and safe for sure. Um, yeah. Well, me, we've got a lot to cover. And uh, as we right. prep for you and I prep for this, um, we got a lot of good stuff to cover. So I'm going to dive right in. Um, I'll be putting links to uh, Mee's book in the chat. And if you have a question for me, McCormick, um, author of My Pinewood Kitchen and, and another book, I think, and a couple, and uh, owner of the Pinewood Kitchen in Tennessee, please hit the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom app, and I'll filter those questions up for me. Okay, me, diving right in. The f hey. Tell us about your philosophy of healing foods and eating for the gut. That was part of this whole description for the webinar. And yeah. uh, could you dive right in and tell yeah. us about that? Well, I'm a hundred percent proof of gut health and gut wellness. So I was like most people, or maybe not, maybe you all are better cooks than me, but I was the worst cook in the United States of America. I shot via all the pictures on the box. Um, I had no relationship with the kitchen. I had kitchen anxiety. Um, I, I found the kitchen to be annoying and a waste of time. I mean, the list of the things that I don't wanna brag about, but they're true stories. And then I had an ulceration, the total circumference of my small intestine. And I lived in chronic pain. I weighed 89 pounds, I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink, and I was slowly dying. And I had a wonderful husband and two beautiful little girls and I didn't wanna leave them. And um, I also am someone that I'm going to tie this in because it's going to tie back in when we talk about the microbiome and the genetics of microbiome. I am someone that had a mother that had Crohn's disease and I watched her slowly die of it and suffer in the eighties. Um, so when I was as sick as I was, I looked into my daughter's face and I said, I wanted to make a change. I didn't want, I saw myself in her and I didn't want her to watch me suffer. I didn't want to pass that on. Right. Cause we passed that on. Um, so I, prayed about it, thought about it, talked about it, and, you know, really begged for a way. And that way came to me through um, a macrobiotic food counselor that got me in the kitchen and first taught me how to make miso soup, which is made from a fermented probiotic organic um, miso paste. And sea vegetables, which are full of trace minerals, and then I would add other vegetables in and I learned to cook whole foods, whole grains, whole beans. And within two weeks I was up off of the floor and within a month I was eating full plates of food. A lot of it was mushy looking <laughs> yeah. and a lot of it was pretty nasty, but my husband loved me enough that he ate it with me. And my kids loved that I could actually sit at the table and mm -hmm. let alone eat at the table. So that's sort of where it began. And then within, um, 
within a year, I mean, this was a journey of macrobiotic cooking. I was up off the ground, but all along I kept thinking there has to be more than one way. Well, the first science wasn't put out on the microbiome until 2002. So this was in 2009. And there was just very few articles. They, those articles were only released within the scientific community. And then by 2017, to watch this jump, there's been over like 9,000 articles. Since by 2017, there were over 9,000 microbiome articles. But back in 2009, the access to microbiome information, it didn't exist. It, wasn't, it didn't exist for regular folks like me and you. Um, and, you know, it, it was something that I knew ha there had to be a way because I knew if I had an ulceration in the circumference in the lining of my intestines, the only thing that could heal it would be food because the only thing that was touching it was food. I think there's a leaf blower in the background. <laughs> we can't hear, hear it. I, every okay, now and then good. I can hear some pretty birds, but I think that's serene. Okay. So. <laughs> so anyways, I knew that the only thing that was touching that, that, that ulcer, which was, which was a wound, was food. And I knew, I knew intuitively that I, if I could influence what, I, what allowed to go into the lining of the intestines, it would heal it. And so that was the beginning of the journey. And I also knew that macrobiotics was too rigid for me. I'm not hating on it, okay? Because people, you say things and people are like, I knew it was bad. It was great. It got me up off the ground. But it wasn't the way, the only way. And I'm really not a fundamentalist. You know, I'm really, is it too loud? You hear it? Homie over there with the leaf blower. And I, uh, I, um, I knew I couldn't be fundamental. I knew I had to, there had to be many ways. So I became my own scientist. I started researching all, everything, every spice, every herb, every vegetable, every legume, every grain and what it did and how it worked and how to cook it and how to change it and what I could combine. And um, I, each time I would expand what I ate, I stayed better longer. What I was doing was creating a diverse microbiome. So I call the bacteria in the intestines the gut homies, okay? Because the uh -huh. gut homies are the people you want. They're your ride or dies. And you want your ride or dies to ride. And you want yeah. them to thrive, not just survive. So I was, I believe in supporting that good bacteria by feeding it what it eats. Well, then luckily because of Dr. Joan Bornsinko, who's been like my mama. And when I first got sick, uh, she's a Harvard cancer cellular biologist with three PhDs from Harvard. And when I got sick, she called me and said, no, 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 you can do this. And we went on a journey together with science and she would just send me things and educate me and open the door and tell me it was possible. And I would just learn more and more and more and more and more. And as I was becoming more and more expansive with my cooking and my and fueling my body with different um, foods, because see the good gut homies, the probiotic bacteria naturally located in the intestines feeds off of prebiotic bacteria. And those prebiotic bacteria are food for the good gut homies. And without that food, without and it's all plants, by the way. So without those that intense rotation of great plants, you can't feed all the bacteria. So I was not a veggie eater. I wasn't mad at it, but it just meant that suddenly I was finding that I had to feed each bacteria that was an anti-inflammatory bacteria. I had to feed it plants, right? So I had to make sure I was just rotating my diet, which then rolled right back into our farm which is a biodynamic organic um, farm and grass fed ca finished cattle ranch and pasture wood raised hogs and pine wood farms. So what we were doing with our livestock was rotating what they were eating. You know, we were making sure that they were being moved from pasture to pasture, that there were different uh, mineral blocks put out for them. And that's how we were balancing them and their natural wellness organically. So then that just made sense to me with our garden to do the same thing for my own microbiome, which was eat as many plants as I could. And then I just expanded. You know, I learned about paleo, I understood vegan, I have many food allergies, many celiac, dairy, preservative, additive. I mean, the list is massive. And then that changed and influenced my cooking. And then from there, I went to culinary school in Los Angeles and I did a professional program in French and American classics because once again, my goal was not to remain narrow in my food philosophy, but to be as expansive as possible 
because what I was learning with the microbiome is we're all individuals and there isn't one way to wellness because we all have a different microbiome. How's that? Yeah. Hey, that's a great story. And it's a personal story. Um, I I know uh, many people um, that are, have autoimmune diseases. My my youngest brother's got Crohn's, so that resonates with me. And I know with autoimmune, it's really tough. But another thing that resonates with me is talking about food being helping to, to heal the body in the natural way. Okay. So let's talk about uh, microbiome science and, and really, I don't know. How that applies to immune system. Yeah. And, and I think another thing that resonated me, with this question is specifically that there's not just one specific way that we're all a little bit different. Um, and so that journey probably looks a lot different for each person. Can you talk to that specifically? Yeah. I mean, so basically what that is, is your body has five healing systems. First of all, what I really love about this webinar and about the way that I'm moving into the world through my wellness, I mean, what happened to me definitely has happened for me. And um, by serving other people, I mean, my struggles, my horrific struggles with my health and now being in a position to be well enough to do this is everything. But what happens is your body has five healing systems. Um, You have your angiogenic system, which is your vascular system and how the body goes into repair mode to um, when the body is in crisis, say you, you hurt your hand, immediately blood vessels are created and they go and they, they try to heal the wound. Um, that angiogenic system is super important, but when the body's microbiome is off, the body's angiogenic system is off. And so when you have an overactive angiogenic system, um, your body's creating blood vessels where they shouldn't be, and they attach to microscopic cancer cells. And you can go to the Angiogenic Foundation um, online, and you can learn all about this. And Dr. William Lee is a leading doctor on this, and that is a fascinating rat hole to go down. And I mean, I went down it. I go down it all the time. And an underactive angiogenic system, which is based from an imbalanced microbiome, meaning you have too much unhealthy bacteria or harmful bacteria for your body. What could be harmful for you is not necessarily harmful for me because we're all individuals. Um, And then you have the body's DNA strands. And so as the belief was that as we aged, our DNA strands shortened, but now we know that with diet, with environment, um, with emotional support and health and stress relief, our DNA strands actually can lengthen major. Okay. That's longevity. Uh, then you have stem cells. All this comes from a balanced microbiome. Your stem cells are what help replenish your body. They're part of your immune health as is the angiogenic. It's all part of immunity. And so, you know, diseases like rheumatoid arthritis are a result of overactive angiogenic, meaning too many blood cells. So too much is going there to the inflammation in my joints and I have rheumatoid arthritis. When you bring it into balance, that doesn't happen. An underactive angiogenic system, for example, is alopecia. There's not enough um, stem cells. There's not enough blood flow. So you're not creating enough blood vessels. There's, and therefore, there's not enough stem cell and there's not enough anything for regrowth. So these are really interesting things when you start digging into the science of how our body's immunity works and our health works. Um, and then you have the immune system. You, know? you have what is the immune system. So for me, what I love the most about being me, McCormick, is... Um, it's like every time I think I don't know, or I'm not smart enough, or I need to have a science degree, or I have to be a chef or a doctor to make food decisions, I blow that out of the water. I mean, you, you know, if you have certain situations, of course you want a doctor, but to cook for your family and to make healthier decisions now in a time of um, we can do this, we have to take better care of ourselves, it's never been more important. You know, it's, we, and you're never been message- more capable. One message I think me that resonates again with, with what you're saying is taking control of your own health, taking, you know, the, the uh, initiative, not just relying on others, just, but going out and seeking answers and then getting all the information and making the right decisions for you, your body, your health. Yeah. I mean, it's about, you know, I love to say, and you said the other day when we were talking, what do you mean by that? I always say like, keep your side of the street cleaned up, right? Like that's your yard. Did you mow it? Did you pick up the leaves? (laughs) Is there any trash in it? 
I mean, I think it's like, what can you do on your side? I absolutely love my doctors. I've been blessed with fantastic MDs in my life, acupuncturists, and I go to them and they check my blood and they tell me what I, what's happening with me. And then I always ask them, what can I do? Like, what do I do? You know, what is my part? And I think that right now, well, we're in this crisis of we better take care of our immune systems because we know for a fact that this current virus um, is really hard on people with metabolic syndrome, with type 2 diabetes, obesity, smokers. I mean, all the things that we all, you know, have participated in at some point or somebody has or has somebody in their family. So I think that... Um, right now is the time that we can clean up our side of the street and that side of the street actually means our kitchen and our, and then we can reset our table because we're on quarantine. You know, we've got our families held hostage. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's a point. That's a, that's a great point because not just like regularly we need to take care of our gut health, but in quarantine, you think about it, my, my youngest son or my son, he loves people. And he doesn't understand why he can't go see his friends right now. Yeah, and know. so, you know, that's so important too. And then today in Oklahoma City, it's kind of overcast. So it's like, you know, that has effects on our moods and our emotions. And I would think emo immune system. So I think this is extremely Your powerful. immune system and your gut health. I mean, serotonin <laughs> is created in the, in the intestines, right? Dopamine in the small intestines. So the gut brain connection is everything. You know, when I get, when my intestines, because of the Crohn's disease. I have Hashimoto's Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, celiac, and psoriasis. How you doing? It's a list. <laughs> but um, when I get, my intestines are inflamed. First of all, something fascinating is once my intestines swell up or I have a celiac reaction to eating something or I get a cold or I get a flu, my intestine swells, I can feel it. Okay, like let's talk digestive, right? And then the next thing I know, I'll get a patch of psoriasis, and then I'll get super fatigued, thyroid, and then my joints hurt, and then I'm in a rabbit hole emotionally. I get sad, I get bummed, I, I'm anxious, I'm reactive, and that's when I go, okay, get it in, get in the kitchen. And then I'll get back in my kitchen and go, what have you been eating too much of? What is your excess? What are you not feeding you know, the gut homies? Because see, your excess is everything. So, and you can have an excess that could be gluten, it could be dairy, it could be wheat, it could be kale, because to think, you know, again, I'm not someone who makes things bad, because it's individual. It's A, your journey, and it's B, your microbiome, and it's your relationship with what you've had too much of. And so even kale, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, onions, garlic, you can create those foods, feed particular bacteria. And if you're excessing out, then you're going to feed that bacteria that they eat off of, that gut homie eats, and you're going to create an imbalance. So it's now, all about mindfulness, right? Like, yeah. what you eating, girl? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I, okay, so I know microbiome and your, your, your uh, statement about we're all different. Uh, there, is there a way to figure that out for yes. each of us? And how do we do that? So the microbiome studies right now are so, I mean, this is the beginning of individualized healthcare. This is the, the beginning of individualized diets. You know, you'll have people that will tell you, I'm vegan and I'm great and you need to be vegan. And I think, okay, okay maybe. Or I'm paleo, you need to be paleo. Or I'm keto and I'm great. Everybody is different. And so um, now with Biome Testing, V-I-O-M-E, which I think is a fantastic company so far. I don't work with them. So, hey, I'm just giving them a shout out because I've used the test. And it's fantastic. You send in a stool sample. And by the way, it comes in a very Kardashian as beautiful poop collecting box, which is like, okay. <laughs> so don't like freak out over the poop collecting, okay? <laughs> hey. You're being a part of it. We hey. eat it, we release it. Hey, me, by the way, did you say V as in Violet? V I O M E. Violet. V I O M E. Bio. Okay, I'll put, I'll put that in the chat. And hey, everybody, if you have questions for me, please hit the Q and A button in the bottom of the Zoom app. So where you're seeing this video, right below, probably right there somewhere, that is uh, the Q and A app. You can ask questions for uh, me. Okay, V, me, continue. Okay. <laughs> so Viome is this great test. You send in your stool sample. You 
you really want to do your whole family or whoever lives with you in intimate quarters, because what we now know is that we share the same microbiome, similar bacteria with the people we live with, because our bacteria is on our hairbrushes, our toothbrushes, not that you share toothbrushes, your cups, your dishes, your utensils, your plates, your toilet seat, your sheets, your towels, your sofa. Um, you know, that cousin that drools when they sleep. <laughs> so the thing is we share bacteria. And okay, that's, um, fan that's, that's pretty compelling right there and interesting and not, you know, I grew up with single mom. So my dad didn't, you know, I wasn't around him all, every single day, but I was my mom and thinking about mm -hmm. my kids and them. That's, that's really compelling. Well, it is because where, where we're, we, we're jumping a little bit. I love to always go back is the, the whole purpose of everything that I love right now about understanding our health and how we can participate in it is that we look at a lot of genetic diseases and we think we're destined to inherit them or well, we now know that genes are fluid science does and i love some you know i love some science so science knows that genes are fluid and they shift and change based on the environment the emotional situation the epigenetics of things the food that we eat and the microbiome so um all these science there are so many studies for example Example, they did a major study in families and they collected um, samplings from the microbiome of, I just, I just saw something scurry across the ground, <laughs> squirrel. So they did a study <laughs> on the microbiome of great grandmothers to great grandchildren. And they found that the children were missing full on bacterias that were found in the great grandmother. And so this is a problem because these bacteria are linked to sh creating short chain fatty acids and these short chain fatty acids reduce inflammation. These bacteria are linked um, to higher rates of disease and, and metabolic syndrome. And oh, my dog is crying. I'm trying to focus. It's so hard. <laughs> so they know that <laughs> you guys are like this lady crazy. I know I warned you. So they're, yeah. they're finding that these kids are missing these full colonies of bacteria right now. And it's really scary because certain bacteria, we don't know how you get them back into the gut. You know, we don't know you, they are doing fecal transplants for certain people with severe Crohn's or C. diff or colitis, and they're having great results. But how do we recolonate what was given, what our ancestors, our hunter and gather ancestors built into our guts, you know, uh, 500 years ago. And so what we're finding out is we inherit the microbiomes of our mothers and our family members, which then again, brings it back to empowering us that we can shift the microbiomes. Um, so for example, like if you take um, particular anti um, probiotics or for me, I prefer to eat my probiotic. So um, kimchi, I, I just took some notes from my own book today, which was really exciting because it's pretty great when your own book becomes your own place to source information. And so one of the most exciting things to me was the World Institute of Kimchi in South Korea. I know there's a place, right? Um, they discovered a new bacteria called Lactobacillus kimchi. And so this bacteria, um, is also the same bacteria that is found naturally in our intestines. It is one of the gut homies. So eating kimchi now is also linked to, um, because that bacteria is linked to fighting inflammation in the body. And for instance, it has a profound effect on influenza A. I mean, isn't that fun science, That's right? Awesome so that science. means yeah. that you can eat something that is going to help you support your cells when they're being attacked by viruses and that, you know, it's just amazing. So eating your way and eating your probiotics is 100% the way that I healed the ulceration in my intestines. And in my kitchen, Pinewood Kitchen, we run a fermentation station, meaning all of the plants that come off of the farm, we, um, we ferment them and we create our own probiotics. We even have a probiotic ketchup, right? Because if you're eating a potato, which is a prebiotic food, and you're dipping it in a probiotic ketchup, you've got a gut homey party. <laughs> and, and by the way, when, when uh, me talks about Pinewood Kitchen, that's her kitchen, of course. But the connection with ILC, Integrative Life Center, is you all provide all the food for the residents in the programs at ILC. Is that right, me? Oh, it's been incredible because... Um, you know, you have what I love about Integrative Life Center, and I've always loved it, is it really looks at the whole person. It looks at everything. 
and what it is that is created to um, support. I think my dog might be trapped over there. What it is to, <laughs> I'm texting my Bella. What did it, you talk, Corey. Yeah, this is, this is a part of uh, quarantine life, by the way. I've had my uh, young, my daughter uh, interrupt and come in and surprise me on meetings and webinars and things. Uh, by the way, this is brought to you by integrativelifecenter.com. You know that because you're on our email list and signed up for this. Um, integrativelifecenter.com, you should check that out. Um, this is a part of some of the resources we're putting together to not just talk about addiction, we're gonna do that and, tr and trauma and things like that, but also all the things like me said, the whole life, that's what I also love about IOC is the whole life, including gut health. The body. And so you have people right now, you know, the thing is is that you have people who have are in a place where they want to feel better. They want they want to um they want to change their lives and they're looking for tools. And food and cooking is a tool. I mean, it's the greatest tool that's been given to me because it showed me how capable I am. It's helped me prove that I'm a much better mother because I know how to take care of my kids in a way that was never taught to me. I'm a, I'm a much better friend because I can help sick people, you know? I, yep. And cooking is the way, it's my meditation that yeah. I can. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think your story is pretty compelling. And by the way, uh, I'm going to put a link back to um, me's book in the chat here. Use the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom app uh, and you can ask question, questions. And we've actually got a couple of questions coming in. So that's, so that's great. Um, I love it. But you know, the, the, that whole thing though, the, you know, in cooking, I went from a mother, you know, I run a kind kitchen in Pinewood. And I went from growing up in a kitchen where my mother viewed the kitchen as from an angry place. Like if she had to cook, she was mad. If she had to clean. She was mad. Sorry, mama. Um, <laughs> but you know, she, it was just what she inherited from her mother. So we don't just inherit our microbiome. We inherit our kitchen habits, right. And our relationship with working in a kitchen. And so for me, learning to cook for my own wellness, it changed my whole point of view. It changed the way that I look at serving another and serving myself. I mean, this is self care. And, um, I love that the food that we create for ILC, it sends that message, you know, and the clients cook. We do like um, blue apron style, we call them kind plates. And they cook um, a couple meals a day on the weekends. They run their own kitchens. They're sent instructions. They're taught the relationship of the food. You know, I think it's really great to, right now we have so much food science to say, you know what, yes, just like you have to say to a child, that cookie's gorgeous, but let's talk about this zucchini, homie, and what the zucchini can do for you. And you have, it's just this great place to empower people. And so for me now, when I'm crazy stressed with the outside world, and I run a kitchen in Pinewood, which is kind of the outside world, getting in my kitchen at home, I'll work six days in a row, and on my day off, I want to cook for my family. You know, I, I shut the world out, I close my mind, I focus on what I'm doing, um, I'm not on my phone. I'm not distracted and I'm creating something which is art that, which is love. That's every, yeah. is a game changer. That's awesome. Well, on that note, let's, let's switch gears to some practical steps we can take in quarantine time to, as, as you say, me change our plates, uh, get some yeah. of those gut homies going, uh, build up a diverse microbiome. What are some practical steps uh, that you could share as we're in uh, quarantine with, you know, limited contact with the outside world, grocery. You know, I, I think the first impact. thing we can do is, is clean it up. I mean, and clean it up without judgment. Okay. Because one thing about me is I am you, you are me. I mean, I mean, you. um, but clean up your kitchen, just get mindful of what are the kids snacking on? What are you snacking on? Is it dry, crunchy? Did it come out of a bag? You know, was it grown on a farm? Um, does it, is it, how fresh is it? What, how many thing ingredients are in it? You know, pay attention to what are you eating all day? Like what, what did you keep going for? Cause we're going back to that excess. This is the first thing is mindful and mindful without judgment. You know, like as you're eating that cookie, you know, finish the cookie, <laughs> but, <laughs> but like get mindful of what you're eating, you know, and what is on your countertop 
and then open up your fridge and look in it and look in your pantry and how whole is it? Meaning how, what in whole form is it? And so, you know, dried grains and beans. Let's talk about beans. Uh, bean eaters, when there have been so many scientific studies about bean eaters, I know we all got really mad at the legumes. Sorry about that, my bean homies. But beans have, and bean eaters have a 70% or wait a minute, I think it's 81%, sorry about that, um, healthier mucosal linings of their small intestine. This is everything. And that's because white beans, black beans, lentils, chickpeas, they feed particular bacteria that create the mucosal lining, which creates the protective lining of the intestines, which prevents leaky gut. So this is a big deal. So canned beans are great. That's fine. Don't judge your canned beans right now. And I use canned beans even when it's not quarantined because I want to have that in there. And then the next thing is, you know, we just looked at what is your excess, but let's look at... Um, how big of a variety are you cooking? And, you know, did you make short grain brown rice? Okay, then don't have that again for a while. Make quinoa now. Um, are you, can, do you have carrots in there? Can you steam carrots? Can you give carrots? If you have picky kids, find a vegetable that they like and support them in that. Mm -hmm. And don't apply the excess thing with them when you're trying to get them on. Just try to get them on the broccoli. Um, and then I think to cook as simply as possible. I think simple ingredients are the, tea, are, the, are the key to when you start changing your plate, which will change your fate. Um, I think don't, don't go for the hardest, most complicated recipe. Just try to eat and cook simple. Steam some veggies, you know, cook simple protein. Um, and then, then start to discover things. And when you have downtime in the house with your kids, bring them in the kitchen or schedule time in your kitchen right now. I mean, the complicated thing is working from home and there's a major urgency that everything has to be done now, right yeah. now. You know, I need the email now. And people are working till nine o'clock at night. And so the thing for me is that what I have to say is, okay, I'm not working for this hour. I am going to go in my kitchen. I'm gonna do all my prep. And then maybe I'll go back at five o'clock and I'll have my girls come in and have or we all stop because they're homeschooling and we all go in the kitchen and we have designated times that we're cooking. And then I make a lot of smoothies. Smoothies are a great way to change the gut homies. You know, you can add things into the smoothies that maybe you're not gonna eat, like whole frozen cranberries. They are amazing uh -huh. for a bacteria called acromangia. That acromangia supports the mucosal lining of the small intestine. I mean, how you do it? It's everything. Yeah. And that mucosal lining and act particularly acromangia fights the inflammation in the body so when my rheumatoid arthritis numbers went up through the roof i went back in my kitchen and i really got into my smoothies because the whole cranberries and the pomegranate and the blueberries loaded with antioxidants and you can buy it all frozen store it in your freezer makes an excellent smoothie um, what else can you do make soup i mean soup is inexpensive it can be made from dried goods it can be made from canned carrots. It can be made from canned spinach. <laughs> I mean, frozen spinach, frozen broccoli, frozen peas. Um, there are a couple ingredients that I think are really great to add to your kitchen that you can order online. And I'm an influ uh, Amazon influencer. So I have my own Amazon influencer um, store, which has links to all the things you're going to want to add in. And we should add that link later. Um, yeah, and you yeah. Can buy I wish we'd had that. How, oh, how can I'll, I find we'll that? No. Okay. We'll find it and we can send it to people too. And, um, yeah. and so miso paste, I get a soy free miso paste, which is great for people who are soy free. And I think the other thing is being flexible with recipes. The best thing that I did in my book is what I wanted in my, what I wanted in every book that I go to. So I can't have dairy <clears throat> because I'm severely allergic. And then I'm always trying to figure out the recipe, but now I'm a chef, so I can do that, but not everyone's a chef. So yeah. um, I, in this book, you know, it says if you use, cow butter great if you use this use this if not or use this these nuts um if you can't have cheese if you can't have nuts use these seeds if you can't have gluten you know then use this grain and i think what i what i'm really trying to do is change the face of hospitality and creating the concept of an inclusive table meaning yeah. without judgment meaning everyone has a different 
different way that they're trying to eat or they want to eat. And um, I love that Pinewood Kitchen and my book supports people in that. Uh, me, so you know, you just scaling, uh, scrolling back just for a second, said about dairy. You're you're uh, allergic Severe. to dairy. Severely, yeah. 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 Christina says the same thing. She goes, "If I'm d- dairy intolerant, what base would I use for smoothies?" Oh, uh, girl. First of all, the other thing is I love is actually less is always best. So in my smoothies, I don't even put. I love oat milk, but it's processed, so I have to be mindful of that. I like almond milk; it's processed. You want to be mindful of that. So I do a lot of water in my smoothies. I'll do, you know, a quarter cup of this berry or a couple tablespoons of this berry, a couple tablespoons. And I have that, re- my gut homie recipe in there. And I also make a homemade coconut milk yogurt that I make at home, which is really easy. And I have that in my Pinewood Kitchen book. Or I buy vegan um, kefirs that I can find and I'll add them in and I rotate because again, it's the fact they're a live culture bacteria. When you make your own homemade yogurts um, and nut milks, or um, you can make your own rice milk is a great thing. When I was first starting art, none of those milks existed in the grocery store. And so when I started this journey 12 years ago, it was rare to find rice milk. Um, So I made my own nut milk. So you can do that. And now you have time. You can do that. It's great to use blanched almond slivers. It speeds it up, by the way. (laughs) And you put in a Vitamix and a nut bag. And uh, you can do that. Or you can skip it and use water. I use a greens powder. Um, I add avocado for that fat if I want. You can buy bags of frozen avocado chunks and add that, keep that in your freezer and add that. And it adds fiber. I also use some vegan protein powders and mix that up. Because remember, the more you mix it up, if you get on a kick and that's all you're doing, you're not supporting the gut homey culture. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Let's, I want to get to the new hospitality, this concept that we talked about earlier this week. I really want to get to that. However, there's some really good questions. I want to make sure. Okay. I want to see them. I want to hear. Yeah. Okay. So um, great question by Pia. If one, if I were to get the biome test or to learn more about my own individual uh, microbiome, how would the results be used? So, Oh, it's so fun. I didn't even say it. Okay, because yeah. I had the dog bark and the leaf blower, and you don't know there's a couple mosquitoes and the kids. The Viome test is legit, homies. Check it out. So the Viome test comes back, okay, and it comes back broken down into um, what the superfoods you want to eat. So it will read what bacteria you have, and then it gives you a list of the foods you really need to hone in on to build up the bacteria that you don't have enough of. And then it comes back with a list of foods that um, are just like, add, like all of it comes down broken down. Like you wanna eat these superfoods to build up this gut homie. You wanna avoid these foods. Um, and it's for 90 days, you do it every 90 days. Cause it changes that fast. In 90 days, you change your gut. Amazing. Oh my God, I feel like I'm on QVC. Amazing. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> reel it in. I, I was wearing pearls. I gave them up for Lent. I need to get them back on. They keep me better behaved. So anyways. So the great thing is that then they give you a list of foods to avoid and you're avoiding them for 90 days. Okay, don't get mad at them. Don't make them bad. Just avoid them. And because either you have eaten so much of it that you fed that particular gut homey bacteria and it needs a break. Okay, because that that colony is out of control or it means that... um, you know, you're teetering because there are foods that say moderate in moderation. So that means that bacteria may become an approaching imbalance, right? And then you just follow it and you can email me because I'm real good at this. Um, I'll help you. It's so easy. And I'll say, okay, you're going to make this, you're going to make that. So at first you're going to get a little overwhelmed and go artichoke carts. I don't know what to do with an artichoke cart. I'm going to help you, you know, or it'll say you can have pumpkin seeds, but you shouldn't have pumpkin right now. Yeah, they're different things. So don't get overwhelmed, get excited, and don't feel limited in what you're not eating. Look at all the things that you apparently have not been eating and add them in and get excited that you're expanding your game. And I think right now during quarantine, we have time to expand our kitchen game and you don't have to do it perfectly. In fact, I'm hosting a big Zoom cooking class um, and you all can join me. Follow me on socials and we'll get you signed up. Uh, Okay. And I'll put links, by the way, to uh, Mee's social account so you can follow her if you don't already. Um, Okay, some great questions. Uh, Monica asks, what can uh, help with mental health and the microbiome? I have a client who is low in lithium, doesn't want to take it. So 
uh, I love the mental health aspect too uh, about all of this. We've got a follow up question on that too. But so, wh what what are I your mean, thoughts on that? Far, my thoughts on that is, you know, first of all, just a lady, not a doctor, right? And so I can't really tell you to take somebody off lithium or not. I think I think the thing with medicine is we can't get mad at it either you know that's the thing and i get it i have been there okay i have been there looking at the face of some serious side effect medications and going is it going to save me am i going to die what do i do so i don't judge the medication thing but what i think is before anybody should stop taking anything they should look at the fact that they're you while they're using the medication get in the kitchen and clean up your side of the street and get get those foods in, start working in foods to support them, right? Like I would say, get people inspired about eating for their microbiome and their health and then see where that leads them. Are they starting to do better? You know, like for me, I'm not on any rheumatoid arthritis. I'm not on any immune suppressants, thank God. Um, because I get in the kitchen and I do it. It's not to say that one day I won't be in horrific pain and I, you know, I might lose this battle with the gut homies, but I'm not banking on that. Um, and need to take medication, but if I were taking it, I would be doing everything simultaneously to support the medication and to support my health. Is that a good answer, Corey? That's a great answer. And I want to give a disclaimer for me too. She's sharing her personal experiences as mm -hmm. a mom, as a chef, as a yeah. cook, things that have worked in her own life. You should yeah. always consult your medical professional always. Uh, on all that. Um, but this holistic, this natural way of supporting your gut health is such a fantastic thing. So I mean, we got to combine it. You know, we got to yeah. combine food and medicine, food and medicine. I don't think that we have to say food is medicine. I don't think we have to say medicine is better than food. I think it's a combination of food and medicine and the individual journey with that medication. You know, I mean, and I think for sure, I'm a less, my personal experience, I'm a less reactive person. I'm way more patient. I can tell when I start getting frazzled, I need to eat, I need to slow down. I have, I have more space to be mindful so I feel like emotionally I'm doing better. Um, I do have Hashimoto's and I do notice, you know, it's a dance. It's just all yeah. a dance. Well, it's a I, kitchen I, dance. We, we all have to give it to you. Despite mosquitoes, uh, you know, <laughs> lawn blower things, dogs barking, you're, you're doing incredible here. So next question by Carlin is, were you able to digest your foods and did you take anything to support your digestion? I, I am a firm believer in enzymes. I, um, digestive enzymes, you can do the research, you can find any enzyme that you love. Again, I'm not affiliated with any companies, but digestive enzymes. So we, you know, as we get older, we have less and less digestive enzymes and um, taking them helps. The less, the more imbalanced the bacteria is. So bacteria breaks down the food. That's the purpose of the gut homies. They eat the plant cells, they break it down. So when people can't digest legumes, I always, I think, okay, not a doctor, but it's usually you don't have the bacteria to break it down. Um, so building that up slowly, digestive enzymes help. And I also, I ate a lot of soups and I am a soup maker. I'm actually launching a soup company called Death's My Soup. <laughs> and it's a lot of pureed, delicious microbiome soups, like nuts. I do better still if I eat my nuts, I put them in my soup and I blend them. You'll love those soup recipes in the book. And then I get all the benefits of the nuts and it doesn't hurt the lining of my intestines, which at times still gets inflamed. I mean, this is, listen, the thing about eating for wellness is you have to eat for your wellness, but you don't just arrive there. You got to stay there. And so I have to focus for the rest of my life as every other person on the planet should and does on staying well and eating for the wellness. You know, it's yeah. like patience. You can't just, you don't get it and keep it. You got to go find it every day. Get a word so yeah. I pureed my food. I, I put my food in blenders when I was healing my intestines. I ate mush. You know, it's like rebuilding the lining of the intestines is slow and gentle. So, you know, you're told you can't eat fiber. So sometimes I'll pull the fiber back or I'll get all the benefits of the fiber in a smoothie as opposed to a juice or, um, you know, it's a dance. Yeah. I wrote all about that too. Yeah. Uh, so Carol, and I think you might've kind of touched on this. I want to make sure I cover this for Carol. She asked, 
Um, she got your book, excited to dive in. Uh, are there vitamin or enzyme? And you just talked about supplements uh, you recommend in addition to GERD. I will, and, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. is that I on your prefer, Amazon thing too? Your page? Yes, and I, and I need to add to my Amazon thing and we will, if we can get it, if we have everybody's contact, we could send out a newsletter. Yep. First of all, the things that I, I never took, um, and I, I take enzymes, I eat my probiotics, um, and I rotate what I eat because you don't want the same culture. Uh, I lay off of it sometimes. I do take host defense. And if I could ever meet Paul Stamets, he owns the company. He's the mushroom man. And I wrote a whole section on the fun guys <laughs> because the gut homies love the fun guys. Get it? So that yeah. I know I'm very <laughs> hokey. So what? Anyways, but the fun guy, mushrooms. I mean, my vitamin D level was a nine when I started this journey 10 years ago. And it's now a 70. Whoop, raise a roof which is a really big deal for someone with that issue. And a huge part of it is eating mushrooms. I do now take vitamin D with, um, what is it K2? Um, I do see Dr. Reisman in Brentwood, Tennessee. He's an MD who also does functional medicine. So he combines it for me when I need to go to the doctor. He is, you know, he's, if I need an outside doctor for a test or a scan, he sends me, he runs all my lab works and he does vitamin IVs for me. And I can tell when I'm feeling really run down, I'll go in, I'll get a big vitamin C push or whatever I need minerals. But, um, I, I do host defense mushrooms. I do turkey tail. I do, um, I do turkey tail, chaga, reishi, lion's mane. I cook lion's mane and I take the capsule. I eat shiitakes like it's going out of style because they're antiviral, which is amazing. Anti-style, antiviral, going out of style, antiviral. I, my, uh, my Taki have interferon in it. Interferon is what's also found in chemotherapy. Um, so I do, I am a mushroom girl. I grow them. I, ra I raise them. Okay. Because mushrooms yeah. are not a plant and they're not an animal. You got to rate, they're their own thing. Okay. Uh, Ed asks, is it possible to shop at our local supermarket in an affordable way to get the proper foods and nutrients? A hundred Great questions. I mean, this is a great question for me. So what you should know about me is I am born in the Northern Appalachian Mountains and I, I was raised on fish sticks and food stamps. So there's been no silver spoon uh, ever on my plate. I am really like a come up in many ways. And so I, I have that mentality. It never, ever left me um, on, I don't waste anything. In my kitchen in Pinewood come Sunday, every carrot is used, right? So you don't have to buy organic wash your produce if you can amazing and you are blessed um you can buy canned beans you can buy rice you can buy brown rice in bulk you can buy millet which is like 99 cents a pound and that'll last for a couple rounds in the kitchen you can buy first of all you don't have we have this thing in this country that we need to have an entire chicken breast you don't first of all two to four ounces of animal at a time is best for digestion so i will take one chicken breast I will chop it up, put it in a stew. I make soups, I make stews. Um, my, rarely do we eat whole hamburgers in our house. If I have ground beef, and I have cattle, but I'm mindful of it, you know? I'm mindful of the life of the animal and um, I'm grateful for it. And so I'll take ground beef and I'll spread it out or ground turkey, we spread it out. Bacon, I dice it and put it on things. So yes, you can do it. You don't have to go and buy a huge amount of fresh produce. I will buy one onion a week. I know it's crazy. I buy one onion. I buy a big clove of garlic. I buy a couple carrots. I buy a couple zucchini. I don't buy tons of it. And then I make sure I use it because I have that no waste mentality, which has been the best blessing to have in my life. You know, because I, think I mean, quick with a dollar homies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plus, I mean that's that's a problem I run into too, and I think that's such a good thing is is start with those, and you gave some great examples of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to make sure we get to the new hospitality and what this thought about the inclusive table, and then uh, we'll be sure and hit the Q and A button at the bottom of the Zoom app and ask questions for me, McCormick. It's been already very enlightening for me. We got about 11 minutes and I wanna make sure we get to the inclusive table. So the so new hospitality is, the new hospitality is really something I didn't know. You know, I, I am a reluctant, 
reluctant restaurateur. So I did not, I was not someone who A, became a chef because I needed any type of self-importance, okay? I became a chef because I was tired of eating mush. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to cook better. I wanted to learn things. I went to culinary school to just make things better. I just, I wanted to learn the technique so that I could then change the ingredient, you know? And the problem with um, hospitality is most culinary, culinary, however you want to call it, um, programs are very rigid. They're super fundamental. And they believe you can only use butter, you can only use um, gluten, you know, whole flour. And they don't look at the, you know, the more variety of grains that you, you bake with, you cook with, you um, saute with, the better it is for the gut. So I just killed a bug. So, <laughs> so um, that's really the problem. They get really crabby with you in culinary school because they say, you know, no, it has to be butter. But I learned to be quiet because I went to their school. They didn't go to mine. And I learned from them. And then when my husband bought the Pinewood Kitchen, I was mad because I was a reluctant restaurateur. But getting in there, I saw it was the path I was meant to, to lead. It showed me how many people like me, McCormick, exist. You know, my whole thing about gluten is I for 10 years didn't know I had celiac. And so I was trying to be gluten free, not to be a pain in the butt to the, to the waitress or the chef, but because I was trying to find a way to feel better. I had gas, I had bloating, I had too much shadoobie, not enough shadoobie. I had spasms, I had acid reflux. So when people are changing their food, they're changing it because they want to feel better and they're trying to clean up their side of the street. And that's the one of the first places that they're seeing in society that they can attempt to change it. So in Pinewood, we don't judge you if you come in and you tell me you're gluten free, but then I see you take a bite of your kid's cake. A lot of people like me, we, don't, we didn't know we were celiac or maybe they're not celiac, but they have a sensitivity to it or they're just doing their best. So running Pinewood Kitchen is about thinking about the food that we grow, that it is for you, that we're making sure we're doing our best. You're spending money with me. This is the new hospitality. You didn't want the cheapest food possibly bought from the vendors. You want the best food because you're going out. So, you know, we don't put pesticides on our, on our things. We try to avoid all GMOs in anything we order. We raise our livestock with kindness and compassion and we avoid the antibiotics, you know, unless we have to separate someone from the herd because they're very sick. That's compassionate ranching, you know, and they get separated out and they're not fed to you. Um, we don't do feedlots. So there, that's the new hospitality. But when you come to my table in Pinewood, you can bring your grandchild or your sister or your husband or yourself and say, I have this list of allergies. What can I eat? And we do it. We rise. Every server, and we're backcountry Tennessee, okay? I have been, I have worked in New York City, Los Angeles. I've traveled the world. I eat in Nashville. And there are very few restaurants I eat in because I always end up apologizing. I'm so sorry I can't have the dairy. Is there anything I can, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I'm gluten-free. And that's not what happens in Pinewood. And so this is the new hospitality. And the new hospitality is, People are looking to feel better and they want better quality and they want to be invested in the place they're eating. When we go back into the world, we want to eat in those mom and pop places because we're seeing that they're leaving. And if they go, they may not come back. Well, there's and a so level that you're talking about with the new hospitality, which is empathy and understanding that someone like you that has this list of things is not trying to be a jerk is trying to maintain their health, take care of their side of the street. We're trying to stay and off also, of the system. Yeah, the social aspect too. I mean, your friends, your family are going out to eat and would like to enjoy it. And, but you have to, so I, I think there, your message in here for me rings to empathy. It is empathy because if we, if our kitchens, first of all, are kind and they're not run from a high anxiety place, your ticket time, your money cut, you're this, you're that, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And crabby. If people are crabby and cooking your kitchen, you're eating crabby food. If they're anxious, you're eating anxious food, okay? We have to change that. So that starts in my kitchen, where my kitchen is kind, they're kind to each other, they're compassionate with each other, and my kitchen is open. So they're looking out into the restaurant and they see the woman that the server says, oh, by the way, she's celiac, she's soy allergy, she's nut allergy, and they see her face and they form a connection. And what we're missing the most 
in our world, in our consumption, um, is relationship. And so you're changing the relationship from the kitchen, from a business model, into a community. And you are putting out into the world empathy and inclusivity and kindness. And you're slowing it down a bit, you know? And I, man, it's the money. It's my joy. It's, I didn't know that was going to happen when I was the reluctant restaurateur. I didn't know that I was going to understand the psychology of what happens in restaurants and what's happening in society. And, you know, in Pinewood, we're just doing a little bit of something every day to shift the way that we all look at each other and see each other. Well, we, your message is loud and clear here. Oops. I mean, we can all do that more and more, especially when we're talking about physical health and the gut health that you've been talking about. So I appreciate that. So a couple of questions came in. And by the way, I'm going to put a link here in the chat to where you can find me more about me, McCormick and the Pinewood Kitchen and her book. Um, so Ed asked, we live near Pinewood, which is awesome. Uh, hey. is, it possible to, is it possible to purchase products from the farm? And so two part question for, for you, me is really, can they do that in person one and second, when we have all these things that are, <laughs> okay. Yeah. You but can second do that. is online. Okay. Second is online. Yes. We are now in our mercantile is open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 11 to four. We are, they're picking today. In fact, a couple of my crew, my farm crew wanted to be on this, but they're picking. So, um, and I'm going to be home picking soon. So they're picking and there's produce for sale in the mercantile. There's beef, there's pork, there's spawn farm eggs. My soups are for sale. We're doing a delivery service into Nashville on Friday and Saturdays now where you can get food or you can get mercantile farm products. Um, all the things are coming. We make, uh, you know, everything from vegan ranch dressings to Chipotle and get jars of that and get those microbiome soups. And soon within the next week, we will have all of our sauces and our microbiome soups up on Pinewood Kitchen and Mercantile.com for sale across the country. And that's our goal is to get our soups everywhere. I mean, that's my big goal is to get food that's pretty quick and it has a shelf life that you can heat up that's gonna support the gut homies and the microbiome. So that's all coming. But yes, you can go to Pinewood, you can call, you can email, all the things, we got you. By the way, we'll have a recording of this on the ILC uh, blog. I'll put a link to that uh, shortly after uh, this webinar and we'll have links in that post with the replay to where you can find more about me, including her book, um, Pinewood Kitchen yes. and other things. So I just put a couple of links into the chat for those of you that are here live. So you can follow up, look at those links, uh, follow and like uh, me on Facebook and also her work with Integrative Life Center. Um, that's uh, pretty compelling that part of the holistic way of treating the individual at uh, integrative life center is this very important subject. Yeah. I mean, like for us, what I love about it is you'll have clients that come in and they do have a lot of digestive issues. And instead of just t telling them they're being difficult, it's part of their ED issues or part of their whatever issues, you know, the people at integrative life center actually listen to them and they hear them. And when they request to eat vegan, they support that. And yeah. when they request gluten-free, they're given the opportunity, or if they request dairy free or they have food allergies, they're given that. If they're having digestive issues, I'm in the kitchen trying to cook for them. You know, I get the, Michael and I, who's my main chef, and um, we get, in Steph, we get the emails and we're like, okay, what can we make for them? Um, they're really supported. Because so you're saying they, ILC is practicing the new hospitality. <laughs> ILC is the new hospitality. Yeah. They are the new hospitality. They are inclusive. And we, and I'm going to include myself in being a part of that. We are running a kind kitchen at ILC. You know, these people are going to leave feeling supported and empowered and inspired that one tool when the world gets crazy, like it is now, is they're going to know how to get in their kitchen and cook some Mima Cormac food. Whoa. That's awesome. <laughs> Promote those gut, gut, gut homies. I'm gut homies. Gut. We need a uh, t-shirt. Hashtag gut homies. <laughs> okay, me, with the last two minutes we have, there's somebody that has been listening. They're like, I'm on. I'm on board. I want to take a next step. Can you give us in the next two minutes or so some advice? Yes. I, and I'll raise my hand. I'm one of those. I want to take a next step to do what you've talked about. Talk about gut health, support the microbiome. One thing you're going to do is you're going to start being mindful. Step one, what mm -hmm. did you eat today? What are you eating each bite? What is it? Like, get mindful. Like, what is the choice you're making? Okay? You have a choice. You know, I'm not mad at the cookie, but are you having a cookie instead of a carrot? 
you know, um, did you, what is your menu? What are you cooking? What do you have in your pantry? Look at your space, look at your kitchen, look at your plate. Don't get mad at it, don't judge it, just acknowledge it. Then what can you do to start changing that? What fresh foods do you have in there? Gut homies love plants. That means vegetables. Do you have vegetables? Do you have legumes? Do you have whole grains that have been soaked overnight? When we soak our grains overnight, it removes the phytic acid, which is part of the problem with absorbing, you know, the way that people believe whole grains block absorption. I, me McCormick just takes all that stuff and blows it out of the water. I'm like, yeah, but if you soak it overnight. So those are the things. Then I want you, when you do your grocery list or your Instacart or whatever you're doing right now, um, get excited, get online. If you don't have my book, get online and try to find recipes that are plant-based. And if you're going to eat meat, which is fantastic and fine or fish or whatever, do that, but make sure the plate is full with as, as many variety of vegetables that you can create. If you don't have a nut allergy, use nuts. Eat nuts as a snack. I love potato chips, okay? I told you, I, I'm a regular homie, but I try to grab a handful of pecans. You know, it's just little things that aren't so crazy. Make smoothies, make soups. Um, don't go and blow $500 at the grocery store because you're gonna make this big change. You know, just take your time. Add things onto the plate. Take things away from the plate. Rotate the plate. Don't think about what you can't have. Think about what you haven't had and what you are so excited to try. Thanks, me. Okay, everybody, it's been a great webinar and we so much appreciate you, me, sharing your experience and expertise and your story. Uh, and talking from your experience and love what you're doing with ILC. So those of you that love the webinar and have appreciated what me says, be sure and go and follow her on Facebook, uh, buy her book, My Pinewood Kitchen. There it is, the great Isn't cover it pretty? there. 130 plus recipes in there. Uh, and also, um, this is a soup. part of a series we're doing. Yeah. This is a part of a series of webinars we're doing uh, at integrativelifenetwork.com. And you can see some of the past ones we've done and more, and I'm sure we'll have me on very, very soon. Uh, she's striking out with her uh, virtual book tour, I think, doing some cool cooking classes. What's this? <laughs> These are my That's collard with coconut bacon. I love, I love me it. some bacon, okay? I was vegan for seven years, so I can throw down the vegan. And I eat mainly plant-based. But if you're trying to give off the bacon, the coconut bacon is off the hook. And you just buy coconut flakes, you marinate them, and you bake them, and you put it in a jar, and you got coconut bacon. Fantastic. Well, Everything I bought your book the other day, too. so. Yeah, simple, take small steps. Uh, I love that, that uh, philosophy and approach to all of this. Well, Be kind. Thank, Be thank kind you, to yourself, right? Yeah. Like just don't beat yourself up right now. Don't look at what you're eating and judge you. Just look at where you're eating and change it. And then every day, don't feel like you're, it's a wagon and you're falling off of it. It's just every day you go to the kitchen and you start over. Remember, the microbiome changes quickly and it is influenced quickly. And you now have the power to change your gut. By changing your plate, you change your, your, you change your fate. And that's the deal. And, I, you know, it's like I know... Right now we're looking, we're all as afraid as I was 10 years ago. And maybe if we take that fear and we shift it and we do, we take our kitchen as a tool that can eliminate the fear and cut the anxiety back because we know we're doing our best. It's everything. I mean, it is, it is the money and it shows us how capable we are. And then you just take that kindness. Don't get crabby in there. When you're in the kitchen and you're getting edgy and crabby, slow your roll, check yourself. And let it go because it doesn't matter. You're not your mama. Well, me, we hope you get home safe and well um, very, very soon. I know it's not fun being away from home. And uh, thank you so much for your time today. It's been excellent. All right, y'all. Peace out. See you in Pinewood or virtually. Bye-bye. <laughs>